when it comes down to working with divine light beings, guardian angels, it is the feeling state that actually tells you the truth. And this is in any area of your life. It's as to whether we choose to listen to this feeling, this truth. Quite often we are guided unbeknown to our awareness of why we're doing something, why we're here, why we're saying this. It is all part of the synchronicities of the pathway that we are meant to be following. Some of us do start to see a pattern appear and we realise that you know, perhaps there is something helping us. If we want to take it the next stage further, we perhaps go and buy a book and perhaps read about angels. We hear stories about UFOs, aliens, ETs. They're all part of the divine plan that are here to assist us in our evolution. The, the point that where we get perhaps a little bit confused, it's down to a vibration as to why, why some people see these beings, feel them, hear them and can communicate with them. Everything is an energy. It has a certain speed to be able to live in a certain area. Human beings are quite low in their vibration. If you can think of the analogy of uh, uh, an aeroplane propeller, when that's going very fast you cannot see it. When it slows down you can. And that is the difference between us, the human being, and say an angel or a true guidance that is coming in. They're vibrating at a higher speed. So unless we are open to this, we don't necessarily see them. But we can actually feel their presence. Again, it's down to how we are feeling ourselves, what, what we're going through in our own lives. When we work with these divine beings, you'll find that they will frequently bring people into your lives that are going to help you on, on whatever it is that you are pursuing. It's again whether or not we're going to listen to what is being given to us. Before you do any soul healing work, you always need to make sure that you are grounded, in other words, in your here and now. One of the most easy ways of grounding yourself is to visualize a tree. And I know we hear this a lot. When a tree is coming down into the ground, it sort of has a waist and it has a skirt that comes down, anchoring it, keeping it stable. And for us, that's a very good way to visualize from our waist as though we've got a skirt going right down to the earth. So we're anchored. Visualize roots going right down to Mother Earth. We are connected to Mother Earth. Everything we have comes through Mother Earth. So it makes sense that we are grounded and connected to her. When you're working with energy, if we were to receive direct energy from Divine Source, we couldn't actually take the vibration. It would be too powerful. So it is downstepped through the dimensions, through all these divine beings who are in the space of divinity. And that is why they're there to help us. We start to get the, the strength of the divine source at a vibration of which we can deal with and handle and understand. As we evolve and we deal with our problems, we can then experience the divine source at a higher level. That is, that is why all these beings are around. That is why the Ascended Masters have become more accessible in the last 10 years, because we are evolving. They are beings who have worked and are connected to the Divine Source. Um, and again, it's down to the vibration of the energy, the speed in which it's working. It, it, would, it would really blow us apart if we had a healing direct from the Divine Source. The vibration is too high. So it is just downstepped, which is why healers are, are used as a channel. You are basically a bit like an oil refinery in reverse. When the healing energies come through, the healer who has probably spent years working on, on their own personal problems, clearing their energies, they, they can connect to these higher vibrations of energy. So the energy will come through them. So when they're working on a person, the um, it's, it's downstepped, it, it's got a bit thicker. So when they're working on a person, what they feel will be gentle and subtle, nothing that's going to make them feel uncomfortable. And it's not because it lacks divinity, anything but. It's divinity working at its true kindness and gentleness. Everything is done in a subtle way of what you can receive. 
and what you're ready to receive as well. Because with all healing, it, it is a teaching, it's a learning. If we've been uh, perpetually stuck in a situation throughout our life, it is basically because we're not really hearing or seeing um, what we are meant to be doing to, to evolve. And so when we receive healing, it is because we are actually ready to make that change. And it is still down to an energetic force. We, we need to, the true healing is about yourself making that decision to evolve, to look at yourself. And we can go to 50 healers a week, but unless we are prepared to actually look at ourselves and make the changes ourselves, it, it will all be ineffective. The true healing is about igniting the divine spark within that person to make their own decisions. And, and that, is, that is what healing is about, to empower that person. Now I work very closely with animals and you'll be amazed at how animals are helping human beings grow. We all have animals which we've probably been very devoted to, that have been a big part of our life. And I find a great deal of the animals I go to, it is actually the people who are in distress and that are unwell. But because they're not prepared to look at themselves, the animals are actually projecting outwards their illness. And it, it's, it's a very interesting scenario because they're very concerned, they love their animals, they, they want their animals well, but actually it is they who, who need the healing. And this is often why we have animals in our life. They're feeling a void, they're, they're compensating for what we are lacking or seeking in our life. So we have our animal to love, to look after, to cherish. And the animals are there to assist us on our, on our um, pathway, but they can only absorb so much of what is going on with us, and then they break down and become ill. And you can almost guarantee without fail, it is actually the owner who is, who is harboring the problem. So that's one of the many roles animals can play um, in our lives. Another role is, I deal very, on a day-to-day -day basis with equines. They, they are my true pathway. And I'm using the horses because it's, it's a very good example. They're actually saying, I'm not accepting the way you're treating us anymore. And they, they're horses that have been brought to us to change our ways. And I'm calling them the master horses. Those horses are showing those people that you need to stop what you're doing. You need to look at how you are treating us. Find another way, because what you're doing isn't working anymore. And in the last six or seven years, there's a deluge of alternative ways of how to handle horses, because people have all of a sudden realized that actually they have got to change. I've learned very many hard lessons with horses, that there is only one way, and that is to completely honor their spirit and start to try and connect to them and hear what they're saying to me. And when you start to work closely with an animal, you will actually see that they are telling you every single movement what they, are, what they need. If you want to have a comfortable time with your animal, you need to listen to their body language and, and the way that they are showing you what they need from you. And it comes down to actually being grounded. Is it, now what does grounded mean? It means that we are actually facing and are happy in our here and now. Even though perhaps our life is a bit of a drudge, we need to be grounded in what we're doing. If we're not, our, our actual energy field is, is not actually very pleasant to be around. And that is where animals will tell you. Because if you are um, an angry person, an upset person, a miserable person, your energy field is actually being chucked at that animal as it does with any other person. And if you want to get results from people and animals in your life, you have to look at what it is that you are doing. As you evolve and grow and develop your own personal life, you will see that you'll get more positive results from people and animals in any situations. 
Whatever we do say, think or feel, there is an energy field that is actually going before us, that is actually trumpeting and heralding our arrival. I mean, you must come across people several times in your life where instantly you walk into the room and you take a dislike to them, or you find that, you know, someone is quite a magnetic personality. Well, whatever you are, your energy is actually the truth. And someone can actually stand and talk in front of you and tell you a whole pack of lies, or saying that they like you, they like this, they like that. But ultimately, what they truly are feeling, the energy is what the people will get, which is why you, you get an instinct, an intuition about people that you think, oh, there's something about him, there's something about her, because it is the energy that you are ultimate feeling. Our energy system knows the truth. No matter what we do, whatever we say, the truth lies at a cellular level in our energies. And when something rings true, our cells feel that. And this is how you learn to know when something is right or wrong. And usually your first instinct on meeting a person or an animal or anything is invariably the right one. But in we quite often override that feeling because we don't want to think that. We'd rather think something perhaps a little bit nicer or we would rather just not go down that avenue. The energy tells the truth. A false persona is, is more of a verbal thing. The energy of what that animal or person will tell the real truth. That, that is the point I'm trying to make. You can, you can say and camouflage as much as you want, but the truth is in the energy, because that is, and that is what is, is coming out of any person or animal, a tree, a place, a building. That, that is the truth. The energy tells the truth. False persona, you, you can actually, you can see through that straight away. If you are sort of open to the energetics, you will know straight away if it's a false persona. Animals are no different to people, they will be on their guard. Yeah. Um, but you will know at an energetic level what they're truly feeling if you are prepared to open up and connect to that animal and accept it for what it truly is. And, and the same with people. Even if you are sort of, you find a person might repel you a bit, if you just stand there quietly into, in, into your centre and realise. You know, we all have a divine spirit, we all have a higher self, and ultimately we are all these divine beings. But we have got, we've got muddied a little bit, you know, we know that. It's, you know, we have to be uh, realistic about, you know, what is going on with human beings and the animals and this planet. But the truth is in, in the energy. You can't resolve anything if you don't own what it is that's going on with you. You can't pretend you're not hurt if you have been hurt. You can't pretend you're not wounded. You can't pretend you're not angry when you really are. If, if you keep pretending, that is when you eventually you, you do become unwell because you're not seeing it. And these are the energetics which, if you are sensitive and you're prepared to be calm in people's presence, you'll truly pick up you know, what is going on, you know, with that person and the animal. You can only heal what you own. You can't um, blame anything else or any situation. You, you have to own whatever it is. Then you, then you can release and let go and heal. That is how energy works. And when you release and let go, you're actually leaving the opening for the divine light to come in more and more for you but you have to own it first. And going back to animals and, and, and the horses, they are, some of, they are our biggest teachers. They make us look at ourselves because they are responding to how we are. And, you know, they will tell us in no uncertain terms that your energy today, I don't want it. Dogs do the same. You know, some dogs can absorb your energy more than others. Some horses can, some cats, whatever pet you have. Other animals are here to tell us, go and sort yourself out. If you want something from me, if you want a relationship, you need to look at yourself. 
and it comes down to the unconditional love. It always comes down to that. But we have to be totally honest, there are more people not in the space of unconditional love on this planet than there are. And that is really the key to how we will all be healed. But we have to start with ourselves. If you want the world to change, you have to start with yourself because it's who you are, what you're thinking, feeling or saying, that is what makes the difference to all those around you. So if you're in a, um, pardon the expression, a crap, crap relationship, awful situation, if you want that to change, you've got to change yourself. You either decide that that situation is not suiting you or that you actually need to change your attitude and the way in which you're applying yourself to it. That is how things change. You can't expect other people to change around you unless you're prepared to look at yourself first. Even when you're thinking a bad thought about someone, which most of us do, and you know, we, we have to be honest, it's much better off to say, okay, I know what I've just thought, forgive me, I'll, I'll sort of take that one back, sorry. Because that thought, we are in that energetic now on this planet, where energy is traveling far more quickly, that thought will get to that person. When you become aware and you are aware that your thoughts are having an effect, you have to be very careful in, in what is behind you know, your intention. It's, your intention is the purity in energy work and that is when you get the results. If you try and manipulate, you will actually get that back a thousandfold. And it's not a threat, that is how it works. So your intention has to be pure. So this is where we have to take full responsibility for ourselves. And again, it's the energy behind. And our true guidance and guardian angels that are working with us, they will set us up to, to some extent a particular scenario until we are working in it in the right energetic. So if you keep having the same thing happen with a person or an animal, you know, the same bad temper, the same irritation, or the same accident. Actually, you are being given the opportunity to change your course of history. And this is why things will keep being demonstrated time and time again. And one day we'll say, oh, why does this always happen to me? It's actually because you're not getting the message. It is your opportunity to shift. And it's to look at yourself. What is it that I need to do? And when you start to do this, the, the doors fly open. And all these, oh, you know, why has it happened to me? Why does it always happen to me? Soon actually falls away. If you get close to someone, your energy fields, which can be either very close, if you're a very happy, vibrant person, your energy field can be at three foot. If, if you're ungrounded, your energy field can be up to 50 foot. But whatever happens, your energy fields, when you're in company, are mingling. So whatever's going on with that person, they are actually mingling their energy in with yours. Now, unless you're a very strong person and confident within yourself, invariably you'll walk away with a little bit of residue from that person. And that's the explanation of how when you're standing talking to someone and you feel yourself getting drained, absolutely drained. And what it is, your energy fields are mixing, they're actually taking your energy because you you perhaps are receptive to what they are saying and they're just taking your energy and you're walking away feeling drained. Now, there's many ways of dealing with that but this is all to do with how you are feeling yourself. If you're feeling vulnerable and weak, you, you know, you're going to get drained very rapidly by, by people and animals. Animals do the same. If they're feeling unwell and you're in their, their company, they can drain you. You can feel it. It's almost like a sucking sensation. And you can walk away from it. Ask for help. Ask that the source of what is, dry, is draining you um, to be disconnected from you. And breathe in calmly. Call in your guardian angel to, to assist you in, in these processes. But whatever's going on with you, you will invariably attract similar and see there's that as well um, and that is often why you get on with people there's this connection it's because your cells and energy fields are vibrating at identical level and it's like snap and you're sympathizing with one another now that that's fine for a while but uh, 
you don't actually walk away feeling happier. It hasn't actually healed you. Our solar plexus, which is here, is, is the real area in which we take in stuff. And if you want to, if you're feeling vulnerable and you're talking to someone and you feel that they are drawing from you or you're beginning to feel not very happy in their presence, if, if you just can't walk away, just put your hands, both your hands. I mean, there's nothing wrong sitting here like this or standing there talking like this. You're, put, you're, you're putting a bit of a barrier up then. It's, it's, a, it's a physical boundary and it's also an energetic boundary. They're simple little techniques which can help you. And there's no, there's no one says that you are here to take on board any one stuff. You don't have to. It, if, if you're vulnerable, don't keep putting yourself in that position. Learn to sort of strengthen your energy fields because ultimately our, the energy field is our life force. And without that, we would not exist. Our physical body is just another part but our energy field is our real life force. That is what we are breathing throughout the whole universe. And when we first are woken up, we do become very sensitive to everything that's going on around us. And we absorb everything that's going on around us. And it can be very depleting, it can, be, it can unbalance us, it can make us feel unwell, it can make us feel very unhappy. And these things happen for a reason to actually wake you up to start to look at what you can do to help yourself. There are the best healers on this planet are the ones that will ignite the divine spark and give you your power back. Invariably I only have to see people once, twice at the most because I send them away empowered and that is the whole point. You're giving themselves back to themselves. You don't want people being dependent on you. And you don't really need, want to be dependent on somebody else for your well-being because you're actually stopping yourself, you're stifling yourself. And the thing is, you know, I'll go back to whatever you think, feel, say or do, you are leaving an energy footprint behind you. And you can take this to whatever extreme you want. If you are, say, a depressed person and, you know, you're in your home and you are depressed, you will walk out of that door go shopping and you might meet someone who actually lifts your spirits for a while. And the thing is, you'll walk back in your house and actually you're walking straight back into your depression because you've left the, the energy field there because it's so intense. I'm talking about, you know, a magnified feeling. Depression can be very magnified. And, you know, this is the time where you have to start to look at yourself and you think, well, why is it that when, as soon as I go back in the house, I feel depressed again? Well, the fact is, you're actually just walking into yourself again. And there are, again, simple techniques of clearing your own home. If you're feeling angry or irritated, it's the same thing. You are leaving that irritation wherever it is you've dumped it. If it's on an animal, they will just give it back to you a thousandfold. If it's in your home, you'll find you'll walk out, feel better, come back in, and all of a sudden you feel irritated again. You've left it there. Simple ways, if, if you sit in a chair or, you know, one chair in your house all the time, when you get up from your chair at the end of the day, beat it with your hands, because it actually disperses the energy. So if you've been sitting there miserable and you're going to go up and, say, make a cup of tea or go out for the day, beat the chair. If you've had a really rough night, you know, bad dreams, restlessness and what have you, you've actually left that energy in that bed. When you make your bed in the morning, get up, beat it, open the windows, move the furniture, because that way, particularly if you're going to say go to a healer or doctor, someone who you feel is going to make yourself better, at least you're preparing the space for when you come back that you're actually going to walk into a clearer energy field. And energy builds on energy. Now, if you have a meditation chair, that's fine. I mean, the more you go and sit in that chair and meditate and connect to a divine source, the more powerful the chair it is. But if it's a chair that you sit there and, you know, that's my misery chair or something, the more you're going to infect yourself. There is so much we can do, just little things that can actually shift how we are. And it can be down to doing your housework. If you really dislike doing a job and you're putting that dislike into that job, the next day is actually going to be even worse because you're walking straight into that energy you've dumped on the vacuum cleaner, cleaning your toilet 
I mean, not many people do that with divine love and light. You know, getting the old toilet brush and think, oh God, this is a revolting job. So of course you put yourself off doing it. You need to get into the space that whatever you're doing, you're bringing spirit into it. When I'm mucking the stables out, I love it. I see the lumps of dung as nuggets of gold. I put them in the wheelbarrow and the last movement I make when I'm making those horses bed, I make sure I'm calm and centered, even if I've been in a hurry, I make sure that last movement I make is calm, grounded and peace. So when I bring those horses in, when they come into their stable, they're going to walk into an energetic of peace. And I know this, I bring them in every day and within half an hour every single one is lying down in their stable. Divinity puts spirit into every job you do. It doesn't mean to say that you've got to gush over it, but just accept that you're doing it and find something that you can enjoy about it, even if it's just for one second. Because then actually your, your, your whole attitude will change and you'll go on to your next job feeling filled with more spirit, more joy. And be disciplined about it. You know you've got to do it and it cleanses you. The thing is, it shifts. It's totally cathartic, all of this stuff. And, you know, you find that you're vibrating at such a level that you will see joy and love in anything. And it's not because you're ungrounded, it's because you've accepted that this is all part of the divine plan to be cleaning that toilet out today. And with good grace and love and joy. And you can you will end up singing through all your jobs. I've brought these photographs of the whales. Now, the whales are probably well, I would go so far, they are the most highly evolved being on this planet. They live interdimensionally. They don't just swim about in the sea. They, they are in all dimensions. They, they've got the knowledge of all. And their biggest gift to human being is peace. And the thing is, they are here more than any other animal on this planet. They are the key. They're holding the peace and the knowledge of everything. Three years ago, I was in Canada, and I was with a, a, a research station with the scientists, and they were just researching the whales. Um, and this was the humpbacks, the finbacks, and the blue whales. What I did pick up more than anything was the finbacks were carrying the karma and the energetics of the whaling. I noticed that the energies, um, after being in there for a whole day, I knew when a humpback whale was coming and when a finback whale was coming because their energies were totally different. Now, those finbacks were so heavy and so, <clears throat> I can't say miserable is the right word, they were just heavy. And you just knew that they were carrying this karma of having been whaled, of, of, for all the whales though, they were carrying the lot. And um, without going into too much detail, I realized that that was what I was meant to be doing, working as a healer. I had to open up and ask for guidance of what needed to be done. And I was guided to call in the healing energies of, of all the whales, but particularly the finbacks, because they needed to have this lifted from them. And they didn't really want the scientific boats very close to them. Um, the humpbacks, they are the, a bit of a clown, the clowns of the sea, they're nicknamed that. Um, they'd forgotten, they're full of joy. If you respect these animals, if you go in the water honouring their spirit, asking permission and do not encroach upon them, they will come to you. It's when you try and force it, when you, you start chasing, taking toys, bringing food. On all the trips I've been on, you're not allowed to touch, chase, feed, bring any toys. Um, even if you get the communication, you can touch me, you're not allowed to. Um, and that, that is honouring the spirit and that is how these animals know and you get your best encounters when you acknowledge their spirit because they know that you are doing that. They are here <coughs> to assist us but we just don't see it half the time and, and we, we're beginning to but we have got a long way to go in many ways. We, we're certainly getting there with the whales and the dolphins. More people now want to go and swim with dolphins and go on whale watching than ever, ever before. I mean, the dolphins, they connect us to our star system. That's their job, from where we originated from, what star, which is our hometown, for want of a better expression. They also demonstrate joy and the total unconditional love and how to live your life. 
When you go and swim with wild dolphins, and I'm talking about the wild ones, not ones in an aquarium, where you go out into the ocean, again, address it from a spiritual point of view, because that does make the difference. It makes all the difference when you honour their spirit. And I ask for all, as whatever healing energies that's pertinent to that person or animals now, for them to receive. I, I, I always say to the Divine Source, but I do work with Archangels, I work with the Palladian Emissaries of Divine Light, I work with the, uh, uh, the Ascended Masters, I work with the Guardian Angels, and I ask the permission of the higher self of that person or animal. Because even if a person rings up and says, Ginny, can you, you know, do some healing, if that person um, really wants it, if the higher self says it's not in that person's interest, it won't happen because the higher self is guided by the soul and it's a soul decision when it comes to healing the soul will have the ultimate say so so you know i always honor what i call the spiritual etiquette i ask permission of the higher self of that person their soul and their true guidance and their guardian angel i mean the list gets a bit long but i believe in working in, in integrity and even though they have given me permission verbally i still ask the higher self because they know what you need I don't I may think you know my personality can't come into it so you know I, I, I say my opening prayer to the divine source and whatever seems to intuitively come through I will be guided from that point onwards and that can be put in the letter it can be put into a crystal and you send it to that person because they might perhaps need when people are very unwell and they really are too tired to start making decisions on what they need, they do need support. That's when healing can be at its real best. You can support that person sometimes for weeks or months even, even two or three years if it's you know, something really chronic, because you are, you're there to, to assist. When that person starts to feel the energies come through, they start to feel stronger, they then begin to know what they actually might need. And, and they may completely change their diet, their lifestyle, they may fire the cleaner, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and all of these energies can come through on anything if the integrity is there and you're working for the highest good of all. And it's the highest good that's pertinent to them now, not what you think. And, and that is how the healing energies work. What happens? Well, before I do anything, I always earth myself. I really make sure I'm earthed because you, you're no good to anyone if you're not grounded. Grounding is the most important because that way you've got, you, you know, you're heaven and earth. You know, it's all one. You can't just be heaven when you're, you're down at this vibration. You know, it has to be an all through ticket, so to speak. And so I earth myself first. I say an opening prayer, asking permission to work with, you know, so and so. If it's meant to be my crown chakra, which is, do you know about chakras? My crown chakra is opened right up to the level to which the energies are meant to be coming from for that person or animal for their now. So it could be just up to, say, the fourth or fifth level. So it will feel very subtle. I will see my chakras open. I have, I have an internal vision. I'll see them spinning open wider and wider and wider, and then they'll burst open like a big flower. And then the energies will start coming through me and if I'm holding an item it will go you know from my hands into the item if the person standing in front of me it will come through my hands obviously my aura gets expanded and that will that will mingle with that person or animals aura and, and that is how it works it has to be downstepped because if a person's very weak they're not going to be able to take a great charge of energy at that moment in time so it has to be a subtle energy that comes through first, if they're a very weak person or animal. The next healing, they could be ready to receive a bit more. When they receive a healing, it clears. So they, they, they're, they're, not, they're not so befuddled, shall we say. So then they are ready to start to think a little bit more for themselves, have a few more ideas on, on what they need. So the next time they're actually coming for a healing session they can probably receive a bit more it's a bit like when you get a horse fit or an animal fit or yourself fit you don't go and run the six mile 
track the, the first day, do you? You build it up. You build it up because otherwise you can, you know, smash your system. And you can do the same with healing energy if you're not careful. If, if you ask and that person say yes and the soul say yes, sometimes you are taught the lesson, okay? If, if you keep asking, I want more, I want more, sometimes they'll, it will be demonstrated that it's like anything, you can overheal. I mean, you don't keep putting cream on a cut after it's healed, do you? Uh, so, you know, you can, you can be a healing junkie to an extent if you wanted to because the feelings and sensations are lovely. Now, unless you, you've got a particular purpose to keep wanting this, to grow and evolve, to perhaps become a healer, sometimes you need to just get on with your life for another month and then see how you're getting on with these new energies. And then if you're ready then, then have some more. And it, it is all about taking a steady course. It doesn't pay to, to be too quick on, on what I call your, your sort of healing journey. A slow healing is often the, what, the one that gets anchored for life. That, that is a better healing in many ways. Unless you really are at that point in your life where you have tried everything to resolve something, you will get your miracle healing because you really have put 110% into your journey. And that's, that's, those healings are phenomenal. And you know you've had that change. You know you've had that switch. But it's still down to you to then take that on board and conduct your life in, in that new energy. You'll be amazed how many people have received what I call the lift and then walked straight back in to everything that's been upsetting them and actually undone all the healing that's been given. Because it's habit. Rather than totally acknowledge thinking that they can actually carry on doing this because they've got a healer who can... I mean, it, I'm not saying it happens a lot, but I have seen it happen. But the thing is, if they acknowledge what they have received, they're going to go back home with a resolution. They know what's affected them, and I'm going to sort it. And it could be divorce, <laughs> it, it could be changing your job, but it's going back in and not doing anything about it, then of course you, you slip back. And, and that is the key. Um, I honour the healing energies. If I have received a healing over a particular issue and I find, because it's a pattern, it's in your cellular level, once that healing has occurred, it, it dilutes, but you've still got these ways about you. You go into it and you find yourself starting to do something. I turn around and say, no, stop. I've received healing over this yesterday. It's my job now to just actually put it into action my strength to stop myself doing this now I mean it, it, it's it's chipping away and, and that's what we have to do we have to chip away at these old ways these old habits these old ways of reacting to people in situations how we react is what actually dictates how we feel and how things pan out you know you hear this old expression you create your own reality believe me you do and it, I don't mean to sound unkind but we do create our own reality because it's the way we react to things. If we live in a situation um, filled with a family full of anger, hurts, etc., etc., and we take it on board and we're trying to keep everyone happy, in the end, you break. You do. Now, you either turn around and say to those people, look, it's about time that you actually sorted this because you're not really there you know, you have to take on people's burdens all the time. Be a support for a while, that, you know, but if it's having a detrimental effect on you, you do need to walk away from it and redress whatever it is that needs to be done. Everyone ultimately is responsible for their hurts and angers. But we do take, we do end up frequently being that, that person carrying the burden. With healing, you do ignite that divine spark in them and empower them. If you are working from that space of true integrity, you ignite that divinity within them, then it's down to them whether or not they make that move. I've worked with many people who have just decided it's too much hard work to try and change this. I'm going to have to just stay being like I am. And that's their decision. You can't force it upon them. If they ask advice, I, I, I would perhaps try and give them some advice. Um, but it's still down to that individual um, because change, you know, is a big thing going into the unknown. 
I mean, even going into a new shop is, is an unknown quantity, and making a major change in your life is a big step. And quite often, it does involve these big steps. Um, but it's actually usually never quite as bad as you think it's going to be. That, that's the irony.